So I think we all have an idea in our heads about what good practice looks like. For probably about a decade of my life, I thought it was just about grinding and putting in the reps. But recently, scientists and psychologists have made huge leaps in understanding what actually helps us learn and retain new skills and information. And a lot of it is probably the exact opposite of what you're currently doing. A lot of that research is summarized in How I Learn by Benedict Carey, which I think is a great introduction to learning that not many people have read. So in this video, I'm gonna go over some of the most important lessons from this book and spoilers by teaching them to you I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to remember them better myself. But let's start with a question. When was the last time you thought you knew something but when you came to use the information realized you didn't have a clue what to do? That brings us to understand the fluency illusion because let's be honest we've all done that. We glance through our notes on whatever it is find that they're familiar in the moment and think we've done enough work to understand and retain whatever we're learning about. In Kerry's words, we forget that we forget and we're terrible judges of what we need to practice or study again. And so the first big lesson of the book is that we need to break what Kerry calls the fluency illusion in order to understand what we don't already know and what we need to focus on. And that brings us to lesson two, which is that testing is crucial. So the idea here is that by forcing our brains to work to dig out memories rather than just passively reviewing our notes, there's evidence that we form stronger connections in the brain and we better remember stuff later. When the brain is working to retrieve studied text, names, formulas, movements or whatever, it's working harder and in a different way from when it's just reviewing notes. And that extra effort builds storage strength. So in the book, Carrie goes through the biggest studies that have been done on testing and finds evidence that frequent early testing can be beneficial for learning. So for instance, students that take a pop quiz on new material just after learning it will do better, whereas ones that wait for a few weeks before a review tend to do worse. So whatever you're trying to learn, it makes sense to test yourself frequently and early. Whether that means like trying a new armbar at Brazilian Jiu Jitsu practice a couple of days after you've done it, or using flashcards to work on your vocabulary. Kerry also covers the value of spaced repetition. And in another video, I've already covered how to like find the optimum intervals between tests to like help your retrieval of information. But there's an even more valuable way to make sure you understand what you're working on, which brings us to lesson three, which is that teaching is better than studying. Now you've probably heard this before. Albert Einstein supposedly said something like, if you can't explain something simply, you don't understand it yourself. And understanding something well enough to be able to explain it to a layman is like a cornerstone of what's now known as the Feynman technique after physicist Richard Feynman. But this is the book that really forced me to commit to this idea because Kerry points out that teaching is kind of another form of self-testing. It exposes the gaps in your knowledge and forces you to confront the things that you don't actually understand. So for instance, I've really started to see my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu improve as I teach more because when people ask me questions about like why I would try a certain movement under certain circumstances or what I would do if it goes wrong, I think about the limits of my own knowledge and I understand where I need to go back and polish certain things up. But if you're already thinking about finding a set time to do this, then I've got bad news, which is that routine is overrated. So when most people think about studying, they also think about consistency, like having a set time or place to settle down and learn whatever they're working on. But Kerry points to studies that suggest that this leads to our lasting memories being kind of strongly linked to the places where we've learned the information. So in one classic example, scuba divers who memorized words underwater were actually better at recalling those words when they were underwater again than when they tried it on dry land. And so it's theorized that our brain attaches context cues to memory. So for instance, if we're always listening to the same style of music as we study, our brain attaches cues to that music that means we'll recall information better when we're listening to it again. And obviously the trouble with this is that you can't always control the context that you need to recall stuff in, whether that's like a sterile examination room or a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu tournament. But the trouble is that you obviously won't always be able to control the context that you need to retrieve a fact or some information or a skill in. And so the solution is to practice those skills in a wide range of environments and hopefully attach a wide range of context cues to them. So taking your laptop to a different room or to a cafe or to the train can help, but so can even just changing the time of day you study or the music that you're listening to while you do it. It also helps to change how you engage with the material. So for instance, by reading it one day, writing it out by hand the next, and then typing it out on a computer the day after that, you're forming a bunch of different context cues which will hopefully help you retrieve it better. So this is definitely something to try when you're studying, but you can also bring it to different skills. So for instance, 
instance, I used to find that when I played piano in public, I was much worse, maybe because I was so used to the controlled environment of my practice room. But after I played in a few different places on a few different pianos, I got more comfortable with performing under like different circumstances. And I was able to retrieve songs that I would like have forgotten in a panic before. And something similar might even happen in martial arts. If you do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in the same gym every day and then you suddenly go to like a huge tournament, it's definitely gonna freak you out. But if you're going to like open mats and different places to train, then you're gonna kind of feel used to training against different people under different circumstances on mats that are like softer or harder than you're used to. And it's a lot more chill. But also, if you get distracted, don't worry too much because procrastination can be helpful. Okay, so here's another question. How can you use six pencils to form four equilateral triangles with each pencil forming one side of each triangle? Six pencils, four triangles. That should be easy, right? It's not this or this or this. So this is an example of an insight problem or one that relies on a kind of aha moment that happens after you look at the problem in a new way. Obviously a lot of scientific problems are insight problems but so are creative ones. And so scientists have spent decades researching what helps us to solve these better and most of them agree that it comes down to a combination of preparation and incubation. You have to consider a variety of approaches and work hard but after you've put the initial effort in it actually helps to step away and give your brain space to work. And so this is something I've brought to my own work. If I'm struggling to write like the intro to a video or to a newsletter, link to my newsletter in the comments by the way, I read as much as I can on the subject that I'm going to talk about and then I like deliberately go away, go for a walk, maybe play a video game or just have a shower to give my brain space to like think about it. And something usually comes to me. So procrastination can definitely help. But if you're still working on the six pencil problem, we'll come back to it in a minute because the power of procrastination leads us to the next lesson, which is that it helps to start early. So this is terrible news for you if you tend to put big projects off to the last minute. But it's also kind of good news because Kerry gives you permission to kind of start them early, but then walk away from them. So the idea is that the act of stopping work on a big complicated project once you've started it, activates it in your mind and leads to you noticing all the things in your daily life that are relevant to it. You'll also be attuned to those random incoming cues in a new way. So as long as you've got a system for writing them down, which can just be a notebook that you carry around, you'll have them all to hand when it's time to start work on the project again. And that all brings us to maybe my favorite lesson from the book, which is that when you sleep does matter. So I think we all know that it's important to get a decent amount of sleep, partly for our health, but also because sleep is when our brain consolidates all the information we've learned in our waking hours. What's also important though is when you sleep. Studies show that deep sleep, which is concentrated in the first few hours of the night, is when you best consolidate stuff like hard facts, like dates, formulas, or concepts. But the stages of sleep that help with motor skills and creative thinking happen in the early hours just before you wake up. So if you're getting ready for a retention heavy test, it actually makes sense to get an early night, consolidate what you've been learning in like those first crucial few hours of sleep, and then wake up early in the morning for a quick review. But if you're doing something creative, whether it's trying to write a book or like get ready for an important sporting or creative performance, then you can set your alarm a little bit later. So maybe have a lie in once in a while. So that's what I've learned from How We Learn and I really do recommend it. But if you'd like to know more about what I've learned from a whole range of other books, some of which not many people have read, then I've got you covered in this playlist over here. Oh, and if you're still thinking about the six pencil problem, just remember, sometimes all you have to do is look at things from another angle.